Going vegan, I missed jalapeno poppers. Growing true raw, I thought I was never gonna be able to have a jalapeno. Jalapenos are pretty insane. Um, they're not that hot until they're that hot. I like to cut it like a fish. Cut it across the neck a little bit and then gut it down the center. Um, jalapenos, you know, they're, they're the flavor that kind of gets you, catches you at the end. You never, never really know how hot they are until you know how hot they are. Sometimes they're not that hot until they are that hot. And in the process of prepping it, sometimes you don't realize how hot your hands are until you've washed them. And then you've touched yourself with them and then you realize how hot they are. So I'm cleaning them out. Um, gloves is a really good idea, but I'm not too sure about all that latex. Clean it out, scoop it out, cut it open, boom. There it goes. Now Kimberly will stuff it. And so jalapeno poppers, slice, gut, pull the guts out. So you really gotta watch your hands after this for all day. Please tell me the best way to wash this stuff off my hands because I'm still learning. Life's practice, we're always learning. So I wanna scoop all the seeds out. The seeds are the spiciest part and they're kinda on the crunchy side that I'm not really going for with this. With the raw jalapeno poppers, we have to dehydrate them for 24 hours, uh, like 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Makes them pretty good. They actually taste like they're cooked after you do that. Um, it's amazing, just dehydrating them at a very low temperature will um, make the these jalapenos have the same feel and taste as if they were cooked, but they're not. And first we're just gutting and stuffing, and then we're gonna coat the outside. We, that's the flax seeds are there, that we're gonna mix with the nut cheese that we made. We'll teach you how to make the nut cheese, or we probably have, or already have taught you, depending on when you're watching this video. And right now we're soaking nuts um, in some filtered water to bring them to life a little bit, sprout them, sprouting nuts by soaking them mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the agua. And I uh, like to do that overnight or so. We already have some nut cheese we made, some lemon, some soaked nuts, and some salt. And then we try a few other things that we like to add here and there. This time we added some jalapeno, some habanero, some serrano, did we do uh, cilantro. cilantro? The last time we did arugula. You can flavor it however you want or make it as simple as you want. Yeah, and um, the lemons are imported here. So we actually switched to limes since they're like super abundant and local. So, you know, it is, we feel important to use what you have locally when you're buying food that is shipped in from, you know, another country or really far away, then you're not getting the nutrients from the land that you're in. Your food's getting jet lags too. Yeah. <laughs> and so the United States is where a lot of the lemons that we saw down here are from. And the United States sprays a lot more than they do down here. Down here, most people don't even have money to, to spray. The reason why they have money to spray in the United States is because the US government subsidizes it. Some pretty crazy stuff going on with the farming in the United States for a long time. You should check it out. So the best goal is to grow your own. The goal is to have property that's all of ours, that we grow all the things that we need. Yeah, that we'll be using more and more everything people. off the land. Yeah, are seeing that vision and wanting to create their own communities and live off the land. It's, I mean, at least as far as our circles, everyone's wanting to do that now. <laughs> and that is how we exit the system is by not playing, by creating our own ways and our own systems. And then we exit the system, the current system, the slave system. So. 
And so we're kind of working as a team here, so that only one of us gets the spicy hands. Well, I've, I've touched a few of the spices. <laughs> she doesn't get the spicy hands as much as I got them. Yeah. So I was using the spoon and then sometimes I say whatever. Sometimes, last time I was doing this, my upper lip started getting spicy without even touching my upper lip. And then afterwards I touched my sensitive spot on accident after I washed it, washed my hands pretty good with soap. And uh, they burned, it, it burned there for a while. And so. You burned your balls? Yeah, I burned my balls. You burned his balls. <laughs> there's, there's nothing like these um, spicy peppers, man. Thank you Mother Earth for this beautiful abundance. Um, thank you, Mexico, for all this amazing abundance here. Yeah, David loves the spicy. Just not on his balls, apparently. <laughs> well, next time you can see if you like the spicy on my balls. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not even go there because uh, it doesn't feel that good. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's a unique experience. <laughs> you know, maybe it's kind of like... Uh, what is that stuff? Icy hot? Icy Na natural hot. icy hot? Or yeah. like, it burns! It burns! But I think it's like taking icy hot to the next level. <laughs> and yeah, so the cheese, you just throw it all in the blender. Salt, limes, and nuts. We have a high speed food processor, so we've blended a bunch of times. And you can see it in the back, it's a ninja. Yeah, we, we love our food processing. And that way we can make it as smooth as we want, running it a bunch of times. Um, I kind of recommend if you're going to use a leaf or a pepper that you spin it in there first or dice it up first so oh, that it. you yeah. get it to a really small state before you add it in the cheese. That way you, you don't have that chunky part in the cheese. And sometimes when you have the nuts in the food processor, you got so much in the food processor, it's not doing that minor chopping. So... I recommend you kind of do the chopping first. And now that we're done gutting, oh, we're doing, depending on what cheese we got left, we're gonna mix in the flax seed with the cheese, probably splash a little water in it mm -hmm. to activate the flax, probably let it sit for a little bit, maybe not. And then um, rub it on the outside of these things. And, and that acts as like a bread coating, sort of, so, yeah. Yeah, and the flax helps the cheese crisp up a little bit more. Yeah. And this here is a red jalapeno. Yeah, those um, ones are usually really hot. And I think sometimes as they get older, after they've been picked off the vine, I think they start turning red. Yeah, so that this that. one may be aged to perfection. It, you, it has appeared from my experience that the red ones are ex, extra spicy. And it, you never know what you're going to get with a jalapeno. Each one of these can have a different heat, a different hotness. Level, yeah. So you can try one habanero and be like, oh, wow, that was so delicious and so yummy. Then you try another habanero and be like, holy God, I'm seeing, I'm hallucinating. One time when I was enjoying a bacon wrapped jalapeno pepper that wasn't vegan, that's for sure, or vegetarian. It was a while back, but I'm sitting there at the bar having one of them yummy things, and I started hallucinating, like, kind of like uh, seeing tracers, kind of like seeing colors, like, like everything, like my vision blurring, not like just from the tears, but like, yeah, it was like a hallucination. It was really trippy. I was like, dang, these are some really good jalapenos. All right, maybe. Yeah. I think this is going to be a light coating of cheese and more flax now. Well, I think it's good that way. Yeah. Crispy. So here's this one. Yep. Now I got this hand here and this one here that's got some jalapeno oils on it, I guess, or some of the juices. and. Don't. Touch your sensitive spots. <laughs> Even after you wash your hands. I've touched my eyes, rubbed my eyes later after washing my hands. And then my eyes start getting spicy. They start heating up and burning a little bit. 
It's very uh, unique. It's it's not quite like the steam nettle. It's not quite as bad as that, but. We don't measure all the time around here. We just kind of wait till our angel guides say, that's enough, honey. <laughs> yeah, you know, you make plans and go with the flow. You read the directions and you make it your own. You check out a recipe and then you do with what you can. You make it work. So Kimberly's making the coating. We're gonna coat one of these. And then maybe we'll, we'll probably make a video on eating them uh, tomorrow. That's the one thing with uh, raw. It takes patience and prep. So, you know, you gotta prepare. You gotta soak the nuts the night before to make your cheese. You gotta kind of get an idea. You gotta, so you gotta start two days before you're ready to serve these jalapeno poppers, which is good. It's really good to learn patience and practice it. It's really good to learn prep and to practice that. It's really good to think ahead a little bit, but also be present in the moment. And those jalapeno poppers, if you uh, rub your sensitive areas like your eyes or your nose or something, you'll, you'll feel the presence. You will be present pretty quick. <laughs> So I'm not gonna film Kimberly coating every one of those, just one, so you um, get an idea, and then I'm gonna call it a video. You can use whatever you want. I would like to just use my hands. Just kind of batter it on there, kind yeah. of cover it, coat it. It's just, that's the easiest way for me. This jalapeno got away until next day. But yeah, you just want to give it a good. And for our dehydrator, we have this tray that um, works so stuff doesn't fall through. So we dehydrate it half the day and then roll it, or you know whatever, not exactly half a day, and then roll it because the moisture still stays on the bottom. So the moisture will be pulled pulled out of this, and it almost is like it's cooked. It, the jalapeno starts uh, breaking down a little bit, like it's been cooked a little and it's really amazing thank you doing, for doing it too long though we we've like left them in there after we ate some and then we uh kept them in the dehydrator and there is a thing as over cooking or not really cooking over dehydrating them i would say they kind of got yeah they started so drying they started out really so weird. it's good to keep the moisture in so 24 hours is, is pretty perfect at 113 in our dehydrator yeah. practice it try it out Thank you for joining us. This is the true raw life. We're working on more recipes for our website. We're working on more videos to share with you. We're starting a class down here in Mexico weekly on Wednesdays to teach people how. We're gonna try to go live and make videos and stuff for that too. And um, check out our website, T-H-E-S-D-I-C-I-N-C.com, The Stick Inc. Dot com. We have our website with all sorts of good stuff in there for you. And we're writing a recipe book, so it'll be available on Amazon, most likely. And uh, maybe an ebook available on our website. And we're going to do a course, a video course. We're also working on a fasting retreat. And we have a fasting guide and a fasting book. The fasting retreat will help you detox your body on a whole nother level to help prepare you for raw, to make that step into your raw life. Raw life is, true raw life is, Foods that are truly raw. True raw life is the life of eating only life, not frozen, not cooked, not heated, and not, um, dead, foods, not dead foods, totally live foods. And I'm glad we can share this with you. I gotta go wash my hands. Uh, Much love. Mwah, thank love, you, love, thank love. you. May you have a beautiful day. Yay.